And now for something completely different. Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. Real talk about money, markets, life. Now, it's The Real Investment Show, presented by RIA Advisors. Well, I think we're back. Welcome to Financial Fitness Friday. I'm Rich Rosso, CFP, with Danny Ratliff, CFP, squared. The old team is back. Gosh knows for how long. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to talk about. But the most important thing that's going on is that Taylor Swift's new album broke overnight. Woo! Her surprise double album is out, and Danny just cannot hold back his excitement. This, this is news to me, so. <laughs> the fans are going wild. Yeah. Don't ask me. I might have an ice cream cone later in celebration. So what does he do? What does who do? Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Oh, what does he do? Oh, yeah. Kidding. Listen, I don't, we're not going to have any gender. Hey, whatever she's no doing, No gender she's doing discussions right. on she's, this show. Uh... <clears throat> we're, we're fluid, so to speak, but not about gender. We're fluid about money because money is fungible. Got a lot of stuff to talk about today, but obviously was the uh, rising geopolitical risk, Danny. So futures are down on the latest Israel-Iran skirmish. Uh, what are we down now? Oh, only 66 on the Dow. Obviously, uh, you were talking about this too, but I know that uh, oil prices and gold spike, but they seem to be coming off those numbers, huh? Yeah, overnight we saw about a 3% spike once the news dropped about Israel and Iran. And, you know, we've seen that it's given most of that back up. And I think that, you know, we have to take a lot of this in context. I know there's a lot of people out there that are very concerned with this escalating. And by all means, I get it. Yeah. But we have to remember what we talk about frequently. What, what does Lance talk mm -hmm. about when we, when we talk about markets? We know that this has been going on. This has been something that's been escalating. Now, what are the bigger concerns with it? I think long-term, right, you right. know, energy. Um, you know, number one, does the U.S. get pulled into this somehow? But well, and again, we might be pulling from the strategic reserves again. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, you know, energy, and, uh, energy as a sector has been upgraded here by numerous... Uh, wire houses and so forth. But I do believe, and I said in the beginning of the year, that I think energy is going to be possibly one of the better places to be. Well, oil has um, actually turned lower since no, this I know. morning. No, I know in the morning, but I'm saying overall, yeah. based on where demand is and so forth, I think we'll we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, so obviously, like you said, Danny, it's it seems like it's a measured downturn, at least in the futures um, this morning. Uh, Procter & Gamble came out. Um, uh, not looking too good there, but um, their sales disappointed, but they raised their earnings forecast, so that wasn't bad. So obviously, um, again, we're in this churning phase where, guess what? Markets just don't really go up every day. I will say, in the face of, and Danny, not, not, I'm gonna, not gonna blow our horn, but I might do that. We've been saying since probably January, there is no way in heck the Fed is going to lower rates six times, three times, and I am still in the camp in zero times. I don't know if I'm right. I actually think the Fed should raise one more time, but that's me. But obviously, I think the market, the sell-off itself has been rather orderly for not getting the juice that it wants. Look, I'm actually surprised. I mean, this is just noise, this downturn, believe me. I mean, again, uh, People have to realize that a 5 to 10% move in the market is par for the course. Uh, obviously, what Lance said earlier this week is absolutely true. It's going to feel much more painful, and you are going to do something stupid in your portfolio because the market is banking on it. But I am just shocked overall that the downturn doesn't seem to be Volatile. It seems to be rather orderly in its process based on the bad news that 
it's been getting. Maybe maybe the market's looking at, well, there's some good news. Maybe I need to look at that. What do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, so so the biggest thing I think that's changed is not that the market, you know, it's not that the Fed has become more hawkish. It's that the market has finally understood that the <laughs> Fed is actually saying one thing and saying, oh, well, maybe they actually mean that. And I think that's what the, the issue is here, right? The Fed is dealing with information that is likely to be revised. There's lots of information that's coming out. And mm-hmm. what a difficult job they have to navigate. Now, we've also we've done this in the yeah. face of a lot of changes in fiscal policy. You know, monetary policy has been rather, you know, it, it's kind of static right now, right? We've pivoted. We're not hiking. We're not doing anything at the moment. Um, we're not cutting either. It's kind of the wait and see approach. But it wasn't like that before because Powell was really b- saying we're going to have three rate cuts. He was so confident about it. like remember yeah. he came out and he was making he became really dovish and we were all confused. Well, everybody was concerned like what does he see that we don't? Yeah, exactly. Mike Mike Leibowitz, he like you know he he uh, he's like our Nick Timoros. He's like what is what what did they just say? I, I mean, so now they got to backtrack. And you, I, in my opinion, the way the market is so addicted to this policy. I, I, I was really expecting by now we'd have a much greater downturn in markets. So for me, it's more of a stair step, very orderly process. It's working off a lot of the overbought conditions and might be opening up opportunities. So you got to understand is that people now, and I think Danny, you've been getting some calls that people are starting to sort of freak out a little bit. And this move is noise. This is not even significant. But people have, what are all the biases that happen right now, Danny, right? As far as benchmarking to the highest level in your portfolio yeah. and so forth. Like, what are, what are you, what do I you mean, see? I mean, I think we see a lot of that, you know, like you get emails where somebody says, well, hey, this was my highest was in, you know, March this date. And, you know, the lowest I've been, was at this time in October. And it's like, well, hang on. Um, you know, we're talking about what, October 23, March this time. So, and everybody's a little bit different depending on how they're invested and what they're in. Yeah. But... It's interesting. This is somebody primarily fixed income. And, you know, you think back, well, where, where, where were yields in? Yields in October, where we hit the 10 year at about 10, excuse me, 5%. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're creeping back up. Yields are down a bit today, actually about six basis points at the moment. Um, and, and so I think we just have to be cautious with the narrative of, okay, benchmarking to this, where we're not benchmarking to financial goals. And that's just one instance. But, you know, I'm hearing more and more about, you know, hey, being more defensive or why are we knew this was coming? Why are we not more in cash? You know, and, and I think that's a testament a little bit to how we manage money and we communicate daily. Most people don't hear from their advisor on a daily basis if they want yes. to. Right. Yes. And so you kind of understand our thoughts our thinking what's going on. And, and while we started selling back in February, cause we thought we were long in a tooth then. Yeah. Again, so, we are, our, our, our selling is very targeted. Yeah. You know, we have, a corral or boundaries around positions. We look at overbought, oversold within, and we try to buy low and trim high. But we're never going to get all the way in no. or all the way out. Right. Or we also want to make that knee jerk reaction. We've seen what this has done. We talked about the 20 day, the 50 day, what's going on, where we're at. Yeah. And yes, is there more room for downside? Absolutely. That doesn't mean we're going to get it. So this needs to be. When we're managing, we need to be orderly as well. Right. And we're going to talk about, uh, are you paying your fair share? But we're also going to get to a new survey from Northwestern Mutual that I I find sort of surprising. Uh, When we get back, stay tuned. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Got a burning financial question you've always wanted to ask Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff? Stocks or 
farms. Annuities or not. Who does your hair? Our next Candid Coffee goes back to our roots. And back to the kitchen table with an open season session for any and all of your questions. Saturday, April 20th. What about tax loss harvesting? Should I take Social Security now? Where'd you get that snappy robe? Register today for our open season Candid Coffee at realinvestmentadvice.com for just about anything you want to know. Where'd you get those shoes? realinvestmentadvice.com When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven-layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax-friendly retirement paycheck. Perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance? Guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855-RIA-PLAN, or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com, realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Small businesses are discovering that attracting and retaining top talent come down to more than just salary. In today's highly competitive job market, compensation is more than just wages. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Healthcare and retirement plans can make the difference in hiring and retaining the best employees. We can show you how to build an affordable, effective employment package that delivers true value for your workers and your business. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So what I don't like is our numbers with retirement, but let me explain what I mean by that. There used to be a commercial on TV, on television, on financial media, what is your number? What is your number? And people are making up numbers. Oh, a million dollars would be great. You know, $2 million. So now there's been a study that shows that, you know, Americans feel they need $1.46 million in savings to be financially secure. And yet I do not know how they come across that number. Uh, we have clients that have way, 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 way less than that who have a great retirement and way, 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 way more than that that, you know, Go, oh my gosh, I need to spend more. I'm running out of money. Or, um, yeah, or just spend less. Right. So you will have a number. It comes from your financial plan and your expectations and your discipline. And your, there's so much that goes into that soup. It's like Grandma Russell's minestrone. Lots of stuff in there. Even some chicken that might not be right after it's been in the fridge for 10 days. But, so, new survey. Northwestern Mutual does really some pretty decent surveys that looks at how much people really are do have in retirement and <clears throat> we know the numbers are sort of sad um you know uh the, when we look at this the fed asks useful questions about this too but um you know in the fed survey before we get to know what's mutual the median which we always look at 65 to 74 year old reported doing okay living comfortably had a number that sort of shocked me, although I do have clients in this range, 500000 to $99,999. The median retiree who reported living comfortably had 100000 to 249000 So it's really difficult to find evidence that the median even of seniors even have a fraction of this $1.46 million. But how do people do it? Well, I, something I, that we, Lance and you all talk about. I think you, you interrupted his show to fix Social Security the other day because Lance is right about the math of Social Security and the problems. I don't ever discount what he's saying. What, I'm, what I look at is the reality of it. One reason that these people are making it is Social Security. Well, Social Security, but I think it's also expectations. <clears throat> what do you expect out of retirement? Yeah. And- you know, 
sometimes we have to put our pride aside and say, hey, look, we are not working any longer. We need to downsize or we need to cut expenses. We can't do some of the things that we once did. And that's a difficult thing to do. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody wants to do that. But I think it goes back to expectations. And a lot of these people are doing things that people – you know, it's hard. They're, they're living with somebody They're You know, you've talked about these communes that you think are going to happen that we're already beginning to see of elderly people living together and renting rooms because of being single. Right. I mean, how yeah. are they going to do it? Yeah. And so I think you, you continue to see that. And that's why some of these people are successful. They're living with family members. They're renting out a basement or, I mean, you've heard stories. We've talked about this before. Wall Street Journal had a really good article on this. I don't know, several months ago. Um, but we also know people that put this into practice. And maybe they're not buying a new car as often, or it's not a new car at all. Maybe they're finding alternate modes of transportation. I mean, they're finding ways, they're being creative mm -hmm. to make this work. And I think that is what those expectations, because as you mentioned, we, we know many people who, I mean, you know, that magic number. That magic number, right. Right. So That's what everybody wants to know. Yeah, everybody the wants to know. The biggest question as a financial advisor you probably get is, what is the number I need to retire? Yeah, and I can't tell you. And so we do the planning, right? And your expectations, right? That's All right. of this that goes into it. And I do agree. There's one point in this article and study talks about how financial planners overestimate how much people need. Because how people really spend retirement is very different than planning software dictates. That's why we sort of fine tune our software to look at how do you spend an early on in retirement versus later on in retirement versus the middle part, right? We look at this spending ebbs and flows but there are studies out there that show that you know you're going to spend probably 40 to 60 percent less in retirement overall than you did while you were working but yep. most planners will say oh no you you're going to want to make sure your income is 100 percent. this is what you want if you're making seventy five five thousand dollars in retirement i mean outside of retirement and you want to still have seventy five thousand dollars to maintain your lifestyle. Well, that may not be true. First of all, savings is in there and savings is an expense. But most important is, yeah, maybe you need to get closer to 80% of your spending in the active part of your retirement, right? When you're traveling, doing all those things. But boy, I don't know about you. I mean, Danny, I probably, I, just because of the nature of how long I've been doing this, I have clients that have been in retirement distribution mode for over two decades. Yeah. And they still have about what they had 20 years ago. Isn't that remarkable? I, you know, I have the same, same experience with that, you know, where a lot of people, they're checking off bucket list items or doing things initially on the onset of retirement. And then inevitably, things just slow down. Yeah. And they don't spend as much. They're not unhealthy. They're, yeah. not, uh, they're not dissatisfied. They're in a different groove. Every lifestyle comes with a different groove. So you go into this middle groove and... You might have special trips for grandkids and all that, but you're more closer to home. You're doing other things. You're not eating out as much. It doesn't mean your lifestyle is impinged in any way. It just means that things are different than when you were traveling and going to all these vacations the first 10 years of retirement. So you got to look at that reality. So of the seniors with more than 10,000 retirement savings, less than one. So this is another shocker of this study. So only 19% of, of retirees reported having less than 10000 in savings, right? Bernie Sanders was saying something that almost 45% of older Americans between 55 and 64 have no savings at all. And oh dear, that how they're going to be able to retire, right? Nearly three out of four of those who were finding it difficult to get by had less than 10000 in savings. And a slight majority of retirees at this asset level which surprised me, 52% said they were doing okay. Like they have pretty much no savings. And they were doing okay. So this is where this is not much of a science as is it's an art when you put together a financial plan, right? Because especially younger generations, and even boomers, even younger boomers in Gen X, there's going to be retirement channel challenges, and I think it's really based on longevity, right, as people live yeah. longer. And you have to have more realistic savings goals, but also more realistic spending goals. So it's just amazing to see how small some of these portfolios are, but yet how satisfied many of these retirees are in retirement, and they're not stressing out over it. 
that was the point of the study that got me. Yeah, I think 1.46 million is their nirvana, but people have to retire sometimes with much less. And this is where Social Security, to your point, and Lance was the other day, has to be fixed. Because Lance doesn't like people on his lawn, and there are going to be a lot of people living on his lawn. Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No, there certainly will. And, and that's, that's Don't the argument get on that my the lawn. Have I, frequently. I live in a gated community. That's what Janet Yellen says. She oh, just everybody. has a gate around his house or his <laughs> moat. <laughs> he asked the, uh, the new HOA if he could do the moat. And they're, they're like, oh, How boy. many alligators do you allow per? <laughs> For household. <laughs> How many tigers? Hey, kids, and- we're going to write down that you live here, okay? I wanted to go see the movie Civil War and have a chance to see it because, you know, one of my screenwriting professors always would tell me, listen, it doesn't have to be realistic. It just has to be sort of believable because, you know, you're in a land of fantasy. But the premise of this movie is California and Texas team up. And I don't see that happening. I, I mean, you know. It's like Danny and Whoopi Goldberg. They don't go together, right? It's just, you know, like, okay, so I might have to buy this premise that Tennessee, uh, that te- Texas and California sort of galvanized. Yeah, I don't see. Um, so uh, you're, and I, also got, and, and, and I was surprised that Lance wasn't in the movie. Like as one of those guys that had the. Was he like the bionic man, like a robot guy? Or? Well, no, like he had like the, one of the stations where you go and it has all the walls around it and the guns. Because okay. like we said, if case is a civil war, we all got to go to Lance's house because yeah. he's got all the supplies. Okay. That's a good idea to do. But, I mean, retirement itself is his own war and you got to win it. But well, that doesn't need you need 1.46 million bullets to do it. The, you, the, the thing you is, might though, is much it, less. It, it, you know, if you talk about it as a broader war, it's small battles in between. And so it's understanding, you know, how do you combat inflation? How do you combat your emotions? Oh, you mean this, well, in yeah, retirement yeah. making actually even what smarter are, decisions with your actual portfolio? All along the way, right? Because yeah, they're all small yeah. battles that we all have to, to go through. And yeah. so what are your expectations from, you know, your perspective? What are you going to do are, when you get to a tough place, especially those without discretionary income? Are you going to cut back or even those with? And, and I will tell you the smartest or, you know, I'm not going to say the smartest, but the, the clients that have the best retirement in general, they're willing to do that intuitively, meaning that markets go down. They, they may call and say, hey, we're going to go ahead and just stop some of these distributions. You know, and I can go back to the plan and say, hey, I think you're OK. You know, we've, we've looked at this. We've accounted for a downturn. We've, we know, you know, you're much better off, but, yeah. you know, I, you know, I'm right now, I just feel better about it. I'm, I'm not spending it. I don't think we're going to do this and this. So let's go ahead and, you know, stop it from $1,000 a month to, you know, 750 whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. But they have a different way of looking at this and they can kind of take a step back. And it's almost like they take a step back and look down at their own retirement and their own finances. Yes. And say, okay, take myself out of this equation. What would I do for somebody else? Manage it. Like a business. And I think you'll be a lot more successful. Yeah. Again, you better have a planner that studies retirement trends, understands what you might face, helps you build realistic plans because you can do it. And you don't need $1.46 million. To do it. it would be nice, but you don't need it. When we get back, we certainly talk about it. Do you, are you paying your fair share of taxes? The U.S. is already soaking the rich. When we get back. The Real Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. Got a burning financial question you've always wanted to ask Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff? Stocks or bonds? Annuities or not? Who does your hair? Our next Candid Coffee goes back to our roots and back to the kitchen table with an open season session for any and all of your questions. Saturday, April 20th. What about tax loss harvesting? Should I take Social Security now? Where'd you get that snappy robe? Register 
sponsor today for our open season candid coffee at realinvestmentadvice.com for just about anything you want to know. Where'd you get those shoes? realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices, so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Just simply click ask a question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. You've heard about this quiet quitting where, you know, I'm just not being paid enough to do my job, so I'm just going to not really do my job. They now have a thing called the Bare Minimum Monday. The Real Investment Show podcast. Basically just doing the bare minimum on Mondays just to get your paycheck and go home. Ultimately, the people who run the business go, well, if you're going to do the bare minimum, I'm going to do the bare minimum and not need you anymore. At Real investmentadvice.com. At some point, somebody's got to work. That's that's kind of the way it works. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax-friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance? Guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855-RIA+. Plan or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, plus each day's radio shows. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So it's going to sound a little corny, but I do get a, I do really get a high from delivering financial plans, which sounds sort of strange. But I did a plan yesterday, Danny, for two hours, <laughs> a two hour delivery yesterday because I make it an experience. I make it fun. And client, you know, people who do a really great job and you really get to know people when you do a financial plan, you really get to. Right, you get to know who they are, their families. You get to know their dreams, what they want. But some people don't put a lot of goals down because they're just starting out and they don't really know. And I met with a great couple that they really know themselves very well and they've done a great job. Um, but they don't have enough goals. But we just start to get to know each other, and it's like two hours in, and I'm getting punch drunk. <laughs> but we're laughing and all that. I said, "Listen, you all got to get out on the patio. You live in Tennessee. Look at the mountains. Have a glass of wine." Take a mushroom and explore your mind. Take a what? A mushroom. And this couple, this couple, because in the big, they were saying in the big, they were saying about three minutes, four minutes earlier. This is the best experience we ever had. We're so glad we hired you to help us with our planning. We are so in sync with what you're saying, and we're so thankful we found you at RIA. And then we started laughing and, and I said, and I said, well, here's what you got to do though. You got to step back and set the goals. And they go, yeah, it's really hard. I said, you got to free your mind. Here's a way to do it. They cracked up. I had Craig on the phone. I don't know what he was thinking. Uh, one of our planners, but you know, you, and I'm not saying that's, 
you build such a rapport with people through a financial plan if it's done correctly. You get to know them so well. You feel like they're your friends. You, the, there's a bonding element to planning that doesn't just come with investment management because you're getting to understand what makes these people tick and what they're thinking and, pa- and painting the pictures of what their dreams are going to look like. And I think it's a very special field, Danny. I think some people are very clinical on how they deliver information, but I think we deliver information in a way because I think just how we do it is real. We don't sugarcoat anything, but we we also are here to have a really good bedside manner and reading the client, the comfortability with levels of things you can and cannot say. I knew they would take it in a funny way and they were cracking up and they said, you're even more of a reason why we love being with you guys. So what I'm saying is if you find a good financial planner and you all click, there's nothing like that um, to help you feel that you could pick up the phone, ask a question, and you know that you're going to get the highest and best answer, or I don't know, let me find out. And I think that that's, I mean, I think that that's a pretty valuable kind of service yeah, it, that it, we provide. Well, so. it's, a, it's an intimate process, right? It I is. I mean, you're, you're talking, you're exposing your financial vulnerabilities you're, you know, good, bad, and different. And then also hopes, dreams, things that you want to accomplish. And so it is personal. And I think that it's so important that you feel that when you're dealing with somebody, but also have somebody who's not just going to be your yes man. I mean, we see that so exactly. often where, you know, they will kind of bend the plan to what you want versus well, what they want to sell, right? Yeah. What they want to offer yeah. you, right? There's an agenda, it feels, right? Th- there is. And so I think that's why it's important to find somebody that is a fiduciary, find it independent, and, and really would just represent your interest and says, listen, mm-hmm. this may be, you know, you want to get here and this may not be the best route. Let's find a different way that we can do this. Somebody has the experience who can say, you know what? I've seen people do it this way. We've done it this way before, but there may be another way that may work better for you. Let's talk about it. Um, and also saying, hey, I know you really want this, but I just don't think that's achievable. And and that's the tough part. Those that's always a difficult part of delivering any type of plan or news to anyone is that are the things that they don't want to hear. And unfortunately, that's a big part of our job. And we talk and joke that many times we probably need a degree more in psychology than we do in finance. Absolutely. You need to read people very well. But all I know is the better show is going on on the YouTube channel. And we, I can't even talk about half the things they're talking about this morning. Oh, man. Maybe I think they're on wine and mushrooms. Oh, my goodness. Too early for Multiple that. lives, a big, big load for the... There's all kinds of stuff going on here we can't talk about. I'm going to have to get on here in a minute. Um, uh, it, But to your point, it really... <laughs> it's crazy. I can't... I, like, I, like, I want to leave the show and just go on to the chat. I'll see you all later. <laughs> So if you don't know what what Rich is talking about, go uh-huh. to YouTube Real Investment Show. Go like, it's subscribe. A shroom. Um, it's a shroom. Go poke around, kick some of these people. It's fun. Marie goes, it's a shroom, Rosso. A shroom? You can't just say a mushroom because then you might be like going to H-E-B or something to get mushrooms. Although that would be good. Sautéed, not bad. Um, so we have canned coffee tomorrow. And this is our open season. It's back to the kitchen table. We started... Uh, canned of coffee back to COVID just because we wanted to talk to you about things that are on your mind. And with Israel striking Iran and, you know, the market's sort of not going up a thousand points every day, which makes you very disappointed. Maybe there's some things that you want to get off your chest. You want to talk about stocks and bonds and annuities. You want to talk about retiring early. Do you wait? Do you want to talk about whatever it is? Come sign up for an hour long, eight o'clock in the morning tomorrow, just for an hour. Uh, I don't know if Danny's going to have, he's, he's been off the green pancakes for a while. I don't think we're going to see those. I think maybe. (sighs) Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, but, um, I'll put in a request, put in a request for green pancakes and, um, we want to make sure we see you there. Bring your questions. Send us your questions. Email them to us. There's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Three phases of retirement. Jeffrey says, go, go, slow, go, no, go. Yeah, sort of. Right. There are phases. That's why you just can't say, I need $50,000 a year, inflation adjusted for 30 years. That's not how reality works. And that your spending should, should be pragmatic 
to realize that. You have to have a planner before we get into the taxes that's not only good at accumulating or helping you accumulate money and save in the right vehicles. Decumulation, creating a retirement income paycheck that's tax efficient and lasts as long as you do is a very, 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 let me say it again, very, say it again and I'll kick you and I know where to. Okay. Very important part of your retirement planning. I think it's equally or more important than your accumulation strategies because, and we have a lot of people in our business that don't really study decumulation. Don't you think so? Well, you know, I think most firms, I, there's probably a bigger emphasis on it now, but I feel like um, many firms for a long time were just preaching accumulate, 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 accumulate. And they never really got real thoughtful about that decumulation phase. Right. And, and, and what I mean by that is, is not just, you know, the accumulation part was just taught all about saving money. It was never about being thoughtful about how you did it. And now, granted, there are a lot more options today than there were 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. But, you know, wider access to Roth 401ks, HSA accounts, which weren't there way back in the day, or, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of these things, they may have had it, but it was not commonly sought after or used or available. So, you, you know, there, there are so many ways yeah. and different things that we can do mm -hmm. as you are accumulating to help you once we get to that distribution phase. And, you know, a lot of places I, I feel like are, it's kind of like financial planning, like, oh yeah, save money, we'll get you here. Here's, but we don't think about all the things on the back end. And, you know, I know we're gonna get into taxes in a moment. Mm -hmm. and that's a big and that's part a big of it. part of it. Yeah. How do you keep more money in your pocket? Yeah. I promise you, you guys spend money and better stewards of capital than where those tax dollars go. How do you like this idea? Real investment shrooms. That's what Marie said. Is this a healthcare business now? What you, I don't know what if is the it market a, drops it another five percent. We might need to package some of those. <laughs> oh That's man, that's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> Welcome to real investment shrooms. Um, shrooms with a view. Um, yes, um, I think also the same advice applies. I, and I don't mean that in a, in a, in a good way. Um, when you work with accumulators and people who are in retirement income phase, in other words, and I always use the Tim, the tool man uh, analogy where Tim and his young family are on one side of the fence. They should be investing much differently than Wilson who looks over the fence, who is retired and is the, you know, the sage, the older gentleman who's seen some things his portfolio, his strategy should be different. But I would dare to say if they both went to the same financial advisor, except for maybe the portfolio allocation, I bet a lot of the advice would be the same. And it shouldn't be that way. Well, I think a lot of it is comfort and experience as well. I mean, I know guys that are in their 90s who will never touch a bond. Right? <laughs> I mean, they're... 100% stocks, but they understand the risk with that. They understand they live through and it. And they They've like it, there. right? They study. Yep. Yeah, they do homework. Yeah. Agreed. And then I know guys in their 30s who've sold businesses or, you know, they've been through things where they, they just, they can't stomach it. And they're all fixed income. Mm -hmm. It's in amazing, fact, right? How risk attitude could be different even for somebody who's 90. I, like you said, somebody yeah. who's 90 who's been studying stocks their whole lives might be really comfortable with an all stock portfolio because they understand it and they have a legacy intent where the younger gentleman's like, I got to preserve everything I have. You got to work with what people are dealing with. I know we got to talk about taxes. It's just such a painful eh. subject. Boring. It used to give everybody a bad mood. We get back, take your breakfast, real investment advice shrooms and join us for the next segment.
get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. Got a burning financial question you've always wanted to ask Richard Rosso and Danny Ratliff? Stocks or bonds? Annuities or not? Who does your hair? Our next Candid Coffee goes back to our roots and back to the kitchen table with an open season session for any and all of your questions. Saturday, April 20th. What about tax loss harvesting? Should I take Social Security now? Where'd you get that snappy robe? Register today for our open season Candid Coffee at realinvestmentadvice.com for just about anything you want to know. Where'd you get those shoes? realinvestmentadvice.com. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll-free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's real investmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax-friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance? Guaranteed income solutions all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today 855-RIA-PLAN or find us online at Real Invest investmentadvice.com realinvestmentadvice.com and now another page from the real investment advisors investing manifesto a passive investment portfolio requires active risk management it's not a choice it's necessity diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So um, if you haven't signed up for them, uh, taxfoundation.org is really a great organization, um, and they send out alerts and reports. Uh, you should check them out. But they went through the IRS data. Uh, they had this study, and again, it's sort of depressing. <laughs> it's sort of what we already knew about how much in taxes. So the 2021 figures, top percent, 1% of Americans reported 26.3% of the country's adjusted gross income paying 45.8% of the taxes. So say say that again, because I think the narrative is always that the rich don't pay their fair share. No, they don't. Right, always. They have some money to actually buy groceries. And we've got to raise taxes. The top 10% of earners provided 75.8% of the revenue. The bottom half of earners, that's 70, almost 77 million returns that reported adjusted gross income up to roughly 46,500. In that tax year, they earned 10.4% of the country's total income. They paid 2.3% of the income tax. And you know what their average tax rate was? Yeah. 3.4%. Well, if you don't want to talk about progressive and depressive. And paying your fair share. Exactly. So the next group, that's the bottom half to the top 25%. That's a total of 38 million returns. So that's earnings of 46,500 to 94,500. They reported 17.5% of the income paying 8.4% of the income taxes. Their average tax rate was 7.2%. So now we're gonna start moving, right? Top 25% to the top 10%, 23 million returns, 94,500 to 170,000, 19.5% of the income reported. They paid 13% of the taxes, had an average of tax rate of 10.3. So now we're going to the top 10 and 5%, 7.7 million returns. You make between 170,000 to 253,000. 
they pay 10.2% of income taxes. Their average tax rate was 14.3. So now, between the top five and 1%, earnings from 253,682, they pay 90% of all income taxes and an average tax rate of close to 19%. So now we come to the top 1%. Pay your share. 1.5 million returns. Earnings in excess of 682,000. Their share of income tax paid, 45.8%. Their average tax rate, 25.9%. So this was 1.5 million returns, the top 1%. Mm-hmm. 45% of revenue came from them, correct? And their correct. average tax rate was 25 versus. 27. Yep. Versus. So, yes, 76.8 million returns that were filed with adjusted gross income up to about 46,500. Mm-hmm. Under the poverty line. Yes. Okay. Average tax rate was 3.4, you said, and they pay 2.3% of all taxes. Yeah, so this amazing. So Erica York, she's a senior economist of the Tax Foundation. She says, look at 2020 data from the CBO. The bottom 60% of taxpayers had an average income ta- tax rate that was effectively negative. Meaning they were getting a return. Correct. Right, refund or... Mm-hmm. Or yeah. refundable tax credit. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, and then you think about this, that, that 76, $76.8 million, if they're under that poverty line, they're getting some type of subsidies likely. Mm-hmm. So they're already getting a break. And at 3.4% average tax rate, I mean, that is... So all this talk about the ultra-wealthy yeah. people, they don't pay any income tax. Oh, no billionaire should pay a lower federal tax rate than a teacher or a sanitation worker or a nurse, right? In 2020, 2021, that average top percent of earners forked over to the IRS more than a quarter of their reported incomes. So the wealthy are shouldering a, a greater, a huge and rising share of that income tax burden. Listen, I understand about paying taxes. Um, I used to thought it was my duty to pay taxes, although Mark Cuban says it's uh, it's just as patriotic as serving in the military, which I think is a little bit, let's just say, frankly, very delusional, but does give you hope that you don't have to be very smart to be a billionaire in America. Um, that you understand that you are paying your fair share. Yeah. Matter well, of fact, what, what was taken out of my account Monday and I almost passed out? crying like a little girl in a corner, I think I'm good. So, and again, if it was helping Americans and the people that need it and veterans, all that, I'm all for it. Like I always say, the payroll tax, Social Security, we got to fund it. Nobody doesn't want to pay taxes. I think it's more of where the money goes. Like we just keep, keep, we we could just keep milking the cow, but we don't have to worry about how it's spent. And that's my big problem. So when you look at these numbers broken down from the IRS, it doesn't jive with the narrative. So you do have to work in retirement. How does that, well, how does that, what does that mean for me in retirement? Well, your social security is taxed. If you make a certain amount of money based on modified adjusted gross income, you're going to get pinned on a surcharge, IRMA charge as we call it, additional charges of, on your base premiums for Part B and Part D Medicare. If you're taking all your money out of tax-deferred accounts, and that's all you go to, it's going to be very difficult for you to avoid the taxation on benefits. And, they don't, and that's sort of like what we call those, Danny, the back pocket taxes, back right? Pocket, you don't really recognize taxes. them as well. Right. What it adds to your marginal rate or even your, your, what it adds to your effective tax rate being taxed on Social Security, either 50% up to 85%. So having some money in brokerage accounts where capital gains are taxed at a lower rate, having some money in Roth that's tax-free and, and, and chiseling or putting together an effective tax-efficient retirement income is going to be important for many people. 
that goes back to that accumulation conversation where it's not just, okay, just put it all in this pre-tax or just fund as much as you can, put away as much as you can. It's about doing so deliberately. It's about making sure you're giving yourself some options so that when yeah. you do get to that distribution phase, you have more flexibility. You keep more money in your pocket. We've got to be cognizant of what's, you know, what is the narrative? What is the government doing? I don't think anybody here, I don't think you or I are making the case that you shouldn't be paying taxes. That's not the point. No, no, no. You, we should be paying taxes. That's fine. And things need to be funded. And that's great. But it's the efficient use of the capital that is sent because you just can't keep milking the people and inefficiently using the money. We have the, one of the greatest misallocation of resources in this country I've ever seen. Part of its fiscal policy, part of its monetary policy. But we have really messed it up since the financial crisis. So if we knew our dollars were going to things that people needed and infrastructure and the right things, that's fine. I don't think anybody's going to complain about paying taxes. But we also have to make sure that there's efficiencies there that there are, and there'll never be always more efficiencies in government, but it just seems that the wheels have come off fiscally. Now, Michael will say, that we're spending about the same that we did before. He, you know, he looks and he has the charts to show it. I think it's more of the narrative that it feels like we're on this incredible spending train that we can't adjust. Like nobody wants to rein it in. Again, I'm still seeing ads on TV for COVID relief. Why is there still COVID relief? I don't know. I hadn't seen those. But I think what he's doing is he's looking at it in relation to the overall economy, right? Like what is the scale of this? Is it still sustainable the bigger problems mm -hmm. that we have is you know how much non-productive yes debt that's out there and lance right? has that chart right yeah. that shows you, you know, how, how many much dollars you put, how many dollars are you putting in for what you're getting back and to get the growth to get right the growth and, that and you so need. this right. growth many times though it's not any type of recurring growth it's not putting into something that's going to give you revenue over and over and over again mm -hmm. it's a one time so you keep having to feed the monster yes over and over again so this is where it becomes extremely problematic. And at some point, yes, this is not sustainable forever. But I can assure you, with the way government spending has been such a large part of the economy, you don't want what's needed. And that's austerity. Nobody wants austerity. Because you thought the great financial crisis was bad? Was bad. Oof. I don't know. There seems like there's this wave. I was reading in um, one of the Financial Times articles, like, and they're very troubled by it, I think, this wave of a hint of austerity talk that's coming back into the, into the fold. Well, I mean, because I, of what's going I'd on. I'd welcome it. I mean, we need, we need to cut useless we need programs. Some sort of fiscal discipline, right? Yeah. Cause like you do, you said it earlier in the show, how is the fed going to use their tools to put out inflation on one end when there, fi there are fiscal fires and money being spent on the other side? It's, it's just not going to work. And that's why we have been saying for how long, Danny, Inflation is permatory, not transitory, and it's proving to be correct. And we've had to change our narrative. We, we didn't think that we were going to get to this point. We thought that we would see much lower rates sooner, but the Fed has continued to do things. The fiscal policy has changed, so we've had to change the narrative a bit too. Yep. doesn't mean we won't see lower rates at some point. It's just going to be when. Right. Thanks for listening. Lance back on Monday. We love you all. You all are crazy in that YouTube chat. I love it. We'll be back Monday before Lance yells at me for having such a terrible show today. Take care. <laughs>